Hello, Patriots. This is Mr. Love, a.k.a. the Math Patriot, bringing you guys another fun and exciting lesson in the world of high school geometry. Things are going to be a little bit different in this lesson because, well, I told my local classes in a remind um, this morning that I had a meeting and some things changed. And in order to get everything out today, what I had decided to do was I was teaching essentially the same lesson for my pre-AP and my core classes, but I'm doing it at different paces. So I recorded one longer video for my pre-AP classes, and then I'm shortening it down to only the parts that my core classes need. So it's going to jump right into the middle of a video that I recorded earlier, um, earlier today. And this is, there are going to be references to examples y'all don't have. I believe it starts on maybe example seven. And I'll refer back to example two. Uh, I'm sorry, things seem a little bit spliced and put together. That's, that, there's a reason for that. So anyway, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, moving on to trapezoids. Trapezoids have kind of a funky formula. One half times height times base one plus base two. Notice what's going on here. Um, if I rearranged this and I add height times one half times base one plus base two, that this area or this piece of the equation here is the average of the two bases. So what's essentially going on there is I'm taking the mid segment. If you remember mid segments, one half of the two bases, the two, the two midpoints of the sides connected together is parallel. And I am creating or uh, doing just height times one half or height times the mid segment times the average of the two bases. And there's also a reason for that. Again, if I cut this off, and cut this off, and then took this and flipped it up, and this and flipped it up, it would make a rectangle. I don't have a nice picture of that. I probably should have included it, and I'm sorry about that. But anyway, find the area of the trapezoid. Notice this one doesn't want perimeter, just area. Find the area of the trapezoid. Area equals one half times height, let's make that look like an H, times base one, plus base two. Again, whichever one is base one or base two doesn't matter. One half times height here is 15, times base one is 18, plus base two is 40. And I can go and type that in the calculator directly like it is. One half times 15 times 18 plus 40, and we get 435 meters squared as my area. Make sure if you haven't caught this yet, make sure you're putting your units on these things. Areas are always units squared, perimeters are always just units. Find the area of the trapezoid. Now, whenever I go through and do area equals one half height times base one plus base two. Well, I know my height is four. I know that base one is nine. I need to find base two. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and draw in this altitude here. Hold on, altitude, this height here. We know it's going to be four because it's going to be exactly equal to the other height. Now, I've got a right triangle with a hypotenuse of five and a leg of four. Well, that's Pythagorean triple, three, four, five. So I know this piece is three. Now, if that's three, that means I had six left over on this side because I have to subtract the three out from the nine. It means that that rectangle, it goes across. Base two is going to be six. So area is one half times four times nine plus six. So one half times four times nine plus six. And my area equals 30 feet squared. Simple enough. All right. The trapezoid has an area of 210. Find the height. Well, again, we're just going to continue the exact same pattern put in the formula or write down the formula. I keep running my H is like B's. One half times B1 plus B2. And let's just plug in what we know. Okay, area is 210. 
one half. Height is unknown, so I'll leave it as an H. Base one plus base two, well, base one is 20 plus base two is 50. And now we just go ahead and solve. 210 equals one half H times 70. Then we're going to make that one half times 70 into a 35. Then divide both sides by 35. 210 divided by 10 is 6. And my unit there is yards. All right, moving on. Rhombuses or kites, these are going to have the exact same area formula, even though they're slightly different shapes. Now, the area formula is D, diagonal 1 times diagonal 2 divided by 2. 1 half D1 D2. Now, keep in mind that a rhombus is also a parallelogram. We saw that earlier on example 2, I believe. So you could use either formula for it. So you can use base times height, or you can use 1 half D1 D2. Kites. Our only formula is one half diagonal one times diagonal two. So let's see, find the area of the rhombus. Well, if these two are marked as the same, so that's going to be seven. This one's going to be nine. So it looks like diagonal one is nine plus nine is 18. Diagonal two is seven plus seven, which is 14. Again, don't get caught up in which one's D1, D2. Doesn't matter. So area equals one half D1 times D2, one half times 18 times 14. So I'm just going to go ahead and do nine times 14. Nine comes to one half times 18. 126 inches squared. All right. Last example. One di diagonal of a rhombus is half as long as the di other diagonal. So I'm just going to go ahead and say this. Diagonal 1 is going to equal 1 half of diagonal 2. Okay. So if the area of the rhombus is 64, well, let's see. 64 is equal to, well, you know what? Let me write the entire formula out. Area equals 1 half D1 D2. Now let's plug in what we know. Area is 64 equals one half diagonal. Now we said that diagonal one was one half diagonal two. So in this diagonal one position, I'm gonna go ahead and circle that with orange. In this diagonal one position, I'm going to go ahead and write one half D two because I performed that substitution and then times D2. Now let's go ahead and combine everything together. One half times one half is one fourth. D2 times D2 is D2 squared. Now I really harped on this earlier in the year talking about the difference between a squared versus a subscript. In this case D1, D2, those ones and twos are written down low at the bottom. Squared is written up top, so you got to keep track of this. This two down here is an identifier. It's saying it's the second diagonal. The two up top, this one up here, is saying that that is a exponent or it is multiplied by itself. Now, to get rid of the one fourth, we're going to multiply both sides by four. So 64 times four is 256 equals d2 squared. Take the square to both sides, and I think that was 16. I know I've already done that today, but my memory is going away. Yep, it was 16. So diagonal 2 is equal to 16. Now, we want to know the length of both diagonals. So I know d2 equals 16, and over here I can see that d1 is 1 half of that, so it's just going to be 8. And it gave me earlier my units were square inches, so these are both inches. All right, that's all we've got for you today. Two new formulas, area of a trapezoid, one-half times base one plus base two times the height, 
and area of a kite and a rhombus, one half times diagonal, one times diagonal two. So not too much more. And that's all I got for you. As always, stay patriotic.